Rolling Wheel on Curved Path. This video is an enhancement to a prior video which shows how to create a rolling wheel on a motion path with its rotation synchronized to its travel along the path. This video will show additional information about how to enhance that goal to create a rolling wheel on a curved path. If you have not seen the prior video, please watch it first as this video will not redo all of those steps. It will focus on what can be done to accommodate a curved motion path. So let me demonstrate now that it will affect us if I change the curvature of the motion path. Notice that now the wheel seems to be turning a little bit slowly. It seems to slide a little bit more as it moves along that path. It's because the path length has been increased, but the rotation of the wheel, the speed has not increased. And because the length of the path has increased, we need a way to measure it. But with a straight ruler, we can't measure a curved path. I mean, it would be very meticulous to go through and try to measure each segment and even guess because you're going around a curve as to how long it actually is. So I'm going to demonstrate a method of flattening out the curve so that it can be measured by that straight line measuring tool. Okay, what I'm going to do is copy the path, paste it, have it become a vertex line, and then I'm going to use the plastic tool to animate that line, flatten it out, and then I can use the measuring tool to get a straight line measurement. Okay, so let me create a new vector level. Okay, I've created that new vector level. Now I go over to the FX room, click on the path, choose the select tool, click over here on the path to select it, control C to copy, and then I'm going to come back to the path and do a paste. And now I've pasted a vector line that matches the path curve. Now I choose the mesh tool. I'm going to create a mesh for that line. Edges length 24. A lot of times I'll change that to 12. It seems to give me smoother results. Mesh margin in pixels 5. It's a line, so I think we're good with five. It seems to be covering the line very well. And then I'm going to create a skeleton on that. So I'll pick one end to start with. And then as long as you can see reasonably straight segment, put the next dot for the skeleton that's being built. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you want to make it so that the final result is accurate. Okay, and then choose Animate, and start flattening that out. One thing that's important to have ticked is the Keep Distance. We don't want to stretch this line or alter its length. We just want to flatten it out. So make sure that Keep Distance is ticked, and start straightening out these segments.
Now, I'm not even going to worry too much about the deformation of the line. You'll see it uh, deform a little bit. It could indicate that there need to be more bones in the skeleton. It's a margin of error situation. I'm just going to let that go. I'm not going to worry too much in this case. Oops, sorry. Ah, I see here it might have helped if I had put the root at the center instead of at one end. Then I could have started at the center and smoothed smoothed things out. But as it is, I'm going to have to move the root, I believe. No. Let's just start straightening it out from the root. It looks like that line has uh, smoothed down as well. So just as the skeleton affects the nearest pixels, it also has a little bit of interpolation toward the following pixels. So that was giving us that curve before. Okay, that's reasonably straight. If you're really concerned about it, you can drop a straight line down on one of the guides here and get it even further. But I think that's good for what I want to do now. I'll choose the measuring tool and I'm going to draw a line with the measuring tool from one end to the other and get my final measurement. 2,321. I'm going to round that up. 2,321. I'm writing that down on a sheet of paper next to me. And I still have written down from the last demonstration that I did where it was the rolling wheel on a straight line. The diameter of my wheel was 140 pixels, and the circumference is 440. So I have the information that I need. I'm going to be dividing 2,321. Let me get my calculator open here. I'm just using the calculator that comes with Windows. And I'm going to divide 2,321 by 440. And that's how many rotations I'm going to now set in the timing. 5.275. I could round that up. I could say 5.3. 5.28. All right, let's hide this path mesh. We can hide that. We can hide the path itself. Timing. And I go to the wheel. And I go to rotation. And we can see the formula there. It was 3.82. So I'll be changing that now to... 5.275. Precision is available. May as well use it. All right. Now, let's test that. And we should see the wheel rotating appropriately for the curved line. It does seem to be an improvement. It's no longer sliding as it had been previously. Now one benefit also of having done that, so we've shaped our path, and now we want something that looks like a ground plane. Well now we have available this path that we've uh, duplicated. What I've done I think that's going to give me more control is I've created a copy of that line, and now I'm going to use the control vertices and handle it that way. Let's see how this works out. I was running into an issue with animation being cumulative, you know, setting a bunch of keyframes automatically as I went along. So and that wasn't a desired result. So let's see what happens here with control vertices. I can add and remove vertices as necessary. 
Now, what I'm basically trying to do at first is to get a good pace, uh, spacing between the line and the path, the original path. Giving myself a little more space here. Now I'm working on a smaller than usual uh, viewing area <clears throat> because I'm doing this recording. Normally I would have I would have uh, the screen larger so that I'd have more space to work with, but this should be okay. Trying to get that even spacing. I might have to throw another control vertice in the middle here. Okay, I think I've got it where I want it. Uh, I'm still a little bit wavy in some spots with that line, but uh, overall it's fitting the path the wheel is following. And as the wheel rolls along, it doesn't seem to slide as it had been originally. So that's, that was the goal. So this will conclude the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.